Welcome back, Tales of Glory listeners. I am Michael Norton of M16 Ministries, and you have turned into Tales of Glory. Again, we thank our four listeners and now our two dogs for tuning in. And um, yeah, it's it's we're back and we're diving back into some cool stuff now. With We have now gone 30% through the interior castle. We're out of the first three mansions, which were ascetical prayer, um, stuff we've accomplished in our own prayer and meditation works. And now we're stepping into mystical prayer. There's some exciting stuff here. This is start where their, their head starts turning and stuff about what happens in prayer. And some very difficult material, but we have our spiritual director, St. Teresa of Avila, the doctor of the, the Catholic Church here in prayer, to help guide us. Really good stuff today. I'm glad you guys turned in. Um, if you missed most of this stuff, you're going, what are you guys talking about? You jumped in right here. This is not the place to jump in. Please feel free to go back and look at us on the field guide to spiritual warfare.blogspot.com for the, the first installments of this uh, Interior Castle by St. Teresa of Avila, her classic manuscript masterpiece on learning to pray. And it's also um, not just beginning prayer from the first through third mansions, but also advanced prayer and how you are you have a transforming union with God, which is sanctification we talk about through Paul, right? The soul goes through sanctification, and she explains it here in deep prayer. And she also explains heavily, and we start encountering here, what it is to have union with God and have bi-directional prayer and then be in communion with, G- with Jesus, right? That's one of the things people have a hard time with. How can you prove there's God? You can't. But as you develop a prayer life, you start seeing now that prayer is bi- bi-directional, right? He's going to start answering us and talking to us. You're going, this is crazy. Um, God's real. I'm getting these answers. He's talking to me. It's not my soul doing it. Something else is stepping in, and something's helped me advance in prayer life. Something's helped me enlarge my heart and my wisdom and God. And it isn't my soul because this is beyond the scope and spectrum of my soul is capable of doing, right? So that's where we're at now. We are in the fourth mansions. Let's roll this here. So we're in St. Teresa of Avila's interior castle, 4th Mansions, Chapter 1. What is going on here, St. Teresa? Help us. So here are the Mansions 4, Chapter 1 overview. The soul is now entering into deeper mansions that are closer to where God lives inside of us. The 4th Mansions are where we begin to experience mystical prayer. In the 4th Mansions, St. Teresa counsels us, and also as our spiritual director, on a new prayer experience and how we handle this differently than we would have in the first three mansions style of our prayer meditation. Mystical prayer is how God communes with us in prayer. It originates from God and ends in us. All right, that's our brief overview. We're going to unpack this, and we're going to encounter some crazy stuff here, some intense stuff in prayer. This is very interesting. I love this stuff. We're getting into starting to get in the nitty-gritty of prayer and how God speaks with us, interacts with us. Fourth mansions. So in the fourth mansions, remember, um, the first three mansions were in the first waters, right? We're at the well, we're drawing up water, we're pulling up stuff, and we're, we're getting the, the, the spiritual favors coming out of the well, right? And then by the third mansion, the well kind of gets arid and dries up. Well, as we persevere and press in during our aridity, which we talked about in the third mansions, chapter one and two, over a period of time, God starts coming to us and speaking to us and doing some crazy stuff in prayer with us. And that's the second waters in prayer. So the soul in fourth mansion is now in the beginning stages of mystical prayer. Using St. Teresa of Avila's second waters analogy, which identifies the start of the mystical prayer, here watering the soul takes place with the gardener installing a water wheel and aqueducts. More water is attained with less effort during prayer. Being in deeper mansions, the soul encounters God. The faculties are supernaturally stilled by God. We're going to talk about that. And the will is driven by its desire to love him who dwells deeper inside. So we're talking about the union of the will here, right? The soul encounters a new type of prayer, which the beginning of our mystical prayer experiences, called infused prayer. <clears throat> As we start to... um. Moving along the mystical experiences, we're going to see the word infused a lot. It's it's basically supernatural prayer. Okay, that's that's talking. It's coming from God. Well, we're going to start learning about infused recollection. Remember how we did our own recollection back in the first through the third mansions in ascetical prayer. We'd meditate, we'd read on stuff, we'd still our mind, and we'd try to keep our mind from wandering, and we'd try to focus on keeping the presence of God. Well, in this we have infused prayer where God comes to us and does a recollection. 
and we're going to talk about there's some stages how this she talks about the stages how it comes in right and that's what the first chapter is going to be about here in uh, fourth mansions what does the initial stages of infused prayer look like with us she begins a subject a mystical prayer introduces a new experience in prayer that originates from god all right this is coming from god he initiates it this is a special grace from god okay we can't push this we can't draw it from him god initiates it so it, we could be waiting years in the third mansions right like what is going on is he even out there talking to me and stuff starts coming in all of a sudden it's crazy so he's it's um where the will is captivated by the presence of God and the faculties of the mind are suspended in a gentle and loving absorption in the presence of God. Right? There's some definitions there. Absorption. Where the soul stays suspended. All right? In the presence of God. That's absorption. As we advance in a mystical prayer, we must learn to be more flexible than we were with our previous style of meditation and fighting of distractions. So in the first through third mansions, when we had distractions, we fought them, right? We try to realign our mind so it's back on focusing the presence of Jesus, right? Back to the presence of Jesus. I don't need to be worried about what sort of chores I have to do around the house or how do I fix my carburetor in my car or, you know, stuff like that. And then, no, I got to get back to being aligned with God. In the fourth mansions, we're going to get distractions, but they come from God. And we're going to have to learn how to discern the distractions from God and tune into him, Right? So it's kind of flipped here. It gets kind of uh, juxtaposed, right? Versus the third mansions, you know, beat it off of the stick, stay focused. Here, if it's a, an infused prayer, we got to let it in, right? Like, no, go away, Jesus. I'm just trying to keep you out of my mind. I'm trying to stay focused on you. Stay out. No, don't, don't bug me right now. Don't distract me. That's kind of what she's talking about here. You got to let him in when it happens. But again, we have to discern it. We're going to talk about this. As a person grows into this new infused prayer, God progressively takes over the will and then the intellect and the imagination. He occupies and absorbs them by what he gives, right? His graces he's giving. St. Teresa calls the suspension of the faculties. That is, they are relieved of their ordinary human necessity of working at thoughts, ideas, and affections. It is not we who decide when this change will take place. It is God who gives a new communion. And thus, it is he who takes the initiative. From the book Fire Within, Thomas Dubé, pages 86-87. Um, great book to get. That's the PhD level of mystical prayer. Um, I'm, I'm trying to expand things here, but he did a great job. Thomas, du, the late Thomas Dubé did a great job of expanding this. I remember years ago, I, I discovered this guy. He's like, wow, I want to learn mystical prayer. He was having retreats. And I go, God, I got going on his retreats. So I finally decided I'm going to go ahead and go and do a retreat with him. He died that year. It's like, dang it, you just can't win at these things, right? He had been a cool guy to learn this stuff from. Unfortunately, he passed away. But Fire Within, it's a good manual to have at your side. Um, it's hard to read straight through. I just usually read the mansions first and go to what he has to say on it. That's something good to have at your side here. He did an excellent job. Some Teresa and definitions. Sweetness and prayer. We had this before last time we, we spoke here. Um, sensible devotion, right? Sensible devotion is experiences and things that are tangible in your prayer and ascetical prayer. You can feel tingly, sadness, you can cry, whatever. Um, it's stuff we pick up with our own human sensory through prayer. Prayer of quiet is something that comes more in Mansions 4, Chapter 2. Um, what we're going to talk about here in Mansions 4, Chapter 1 is an infused contemplation. Mystical experience where God captivates will with love and suspends the faculties in his presence. That's what we're looking at. Infused prayer. Absorption. The temporary state of the soul and its faculties during the mystical prayer experience. There's one other term I want to throw out here too, because sometimes she'll use the word ecstasy and ecstatic. Um, again, these terms have been butchered by the, the, the new mystics or something. They, they throw ecstasy is some weird stuff. I'm going to cover this later. I have a funny example about this, how they did this, what, what happened. It's kind of really messed up. But ecstasy or ecstatic in mystical theology means suspension of the faculties. It means you're just like, wow, you're caught up. Um, it's not, it's not trans, transcendental meditation. Just God comes in. Suspends the faculties, you're like, whoa, what's going on here? And pulls your will in closer with him, right? We're the union of will. We're at a place now where God understands our will wants to be union with his. That's why he can come in and do this, right? He's being patient. He's being loving. And if he knows we're ready, he'll start doing the union of will with us. And that's what's going on here. That's what we part of the pieces we waited for. The beginning stages of mystical theology are union of the will. And that's where we're at here in the first chapter. Oh, here we go. Mansions 4, chapter 1, paragraph 1. 
Graces received in this mansion. As I begin to write about the fourth mansions, it's imperative that I surrender myself to the Holy Spirit and beg that from this point forward, it is he who speaks for me, so that you may understand the subject matter of the fourth mansions I'm about to present. We will now begin to examine the supernatural, which is a difficult subject for me to explain clearly, unless his majesty explains it for me, as he did when I explained it to the best of my abilities 14 years ago. I think the 14 years ago she's referring to is her examples in the book of life. She does um, refer to this. And so she's kind of pointing us in that direction. Her autobiography, life. Paragraph one continued. Although now I believe I have better revelation about these favors which the Lord grants to some souls, the task of explaining these experiences is slightly more difficult. If it's his majesty's will for me to edify others on this, may he do so. Yep, she's talking about this is going to be a tough subject matter for her, and she's, she's asking the Holy Spirit, man, give a revelation how to, how to present this. Paragraph 2. Mystic favors. These deeper mansions are closer to the king's dwelling place. They are very beautiful and so subtle are the things I have seen and heard in them. It's difficult to explain the experiences we have here. The mind has a difficult time experiencing a lucid explanation or description to those who have not yet experienced these graces themselves. However, for those of you who have enjoyed these favors especially if it was great to extent, will easily comprehend what it is I am explaining here. Paragraph 3. Temptations bring humility and merit. Typically, a soul must have dwelt for a long time in the former mansions before entering these higher mansions. Although this is a common form of progression through the mansions, as you may have heard, it is not a fixed rule. God will give the progression through mansions when and to whom he wills. The goods are his own and his choice wrongs no one. God is in charge of our spiritual growth. The poisonous reptiles rarely come into these rooms, and if they manage to get in, may provide some healthy temptations that will strengthen the soul. Okay, so it, we're not going to transverse this thing linearly, she's saying, right? We can hop around. And by that she's saying sometimes we'll be given a little taste of something from a deeper mansion, and it may confuse us. Wow, I must be in the fifth mansions now because that was a fifth mansion experience. No, he let us have a taste of it in the third mansions, right? And just say, hey, come on, this this stuff's down there for you. You can experience it now and you can experience it again, but I just want to nudge you ahead, right? He's kind of nudge us on to deeper mansions with some of these little things he has. And it may confuse us we're in deeper mansions, we're not. So if he, he graces us with a deeper mansion experience, that's just to nudge us along, right? So the poisonous reptiles rarely come in this room, and if they manage to get in, may provide some healthy temptations that will strengthen the soul. <laughs> That's a disclaimer. <laughs> That's a good one right there. He may let in some serious demonic stuff for trials to build us into a stronger soul. So when the stuff comes in, it's going to strengthen us, right? Just don't freak out when it happens. But there's a term. Was it put on your big boy panties or big girl panties? That's what he's saying in prayer right now. Here it comes, right? If you really want this deeper stuff, here it comes. But also, um, if there's something that needs to be corrected along the way, God's going to let that darker spiritual warfare in to build you and strengthen you. Paragraph 3 continued. It is better for the reptiles to get in and wage a war in a state of spiritual development. For without temptation... The devil might deceive us about our own divine consolations and convince us everything's okay, which can injure us when in fact we need to work in certain areas. Besides, the soul would benefit less being deprived of all occasions of merit if we're left continually in a state of absorption with God. It's not a good idea to leave the soul in absorption. Nor do I think it is possible for the human soul to remain continuously in the presence of the Lord while we are here in a life of exile. Okay. So the temptation also comes in by the enemy if we think, hey, we're, we're doing really good. We're constantly in a state of absorption. We're constantly in the presence of God. And she's saying, it's not a good thing. In fact, um, if God doesn't tempt us, we may be in a bad state, but God didn't let us know. So sometimes if we're in absorption and the enemy comes, it's probably because he wants to correct something in us, right? So he's going to let the little uh, stinkers come in and we have to deal with it in a trial, right? There's going to be a lot of trials. I don't think there's any room in the mansion that is trial list. Just get over that one, right? So that's how God shapes us and works us through our sanctification of our soul, through trials. And as we get bigger and more experience in this and we get more belts in our prayer martial arts, he's going to allow us some bigger things in because he expects us to be able to deal with it. 
Paragraph 4. Sensible Devotion and Natural Joys. I would like to discuss the differences and subtleties between sweetness in prayer and spiritual consolations. Keep in mind, too, that there is something I call sweetness and devotion, which are experiences we acquire drawing in God's presence through our own efforts and meditation and petition to our Lord. Again, these proceed from our own human nature and ultimately ends in God and is guided by His grace. Understand that although it originates from us, we can do nothing without God. The sweetness in prayer arises from the good work we perform and appears to result from our own human efforts in prayer. Okay, get what's going on here? This is ascetical prayer, right? There's sweetness in prayer. We feel good about this. We feel good about ourselves. Joy doing the God's work. We may cry about stuff. We may feel good, feel happy. These are natural human responses. It's sensible devotion, and it's from our first three mansions of prayer, ascetical prayer, efforts of our own, right? But although they end in God's hands, God receives them. They started with us. And again, they couldn't have got there without God's effort in guiding us, okay? So that's what she's trying to unpack here. Paragraph 4 continued, We get a feeling of satisfaction at having worked so hard, but then again, we can feel the same satisfaction from other things we can experience here on earth not associated with meditation and prayer, such as unexpectedly coming into a large fortune, suddenly meeting with a dearly loved friend, or succeeding in any important or influential affair which makes a sensation to the world. Again, it would be felt by one who had told her husband, brother, or son was dead and saw him return to her life. I have seen people weep from such happiness as I've done myself. Okay, so she's saying we can associate we're experiencing prayer with other earthly sensible sensory, right? Um, We can feel the same joys in prayer. So these are very um, human nature experiences. However, they can be used in prayer. They bring our body into prayer, flesh, um, as we worship God or as we we pray to God. So she's saying these aren't mystical experiences because you can have the same joy and same sadness by everyday experiences outside of our prayer life. Keep those in mind. Paragraph 4 continued. I consider both these joys and those we feel in religious matters to be natural ones. Although there is nothing wrong about the former, yet those produced by devotion spring from a more noble source. In short, they begin in ourselves and end in God. All right? Spiritual consolations, on the contrary, arise from God, and our nature feels them and rejoices as keenly in them, and indeed far more likely keenly than others I have described. Okay, so this is where... God may want us to feel something, so he'll, it'll originate from him and may you know, entice one of our emotions or one of our sensories, right? They originate from God, and we'll discern as we go through the mansions which are human nature and which are mystical. Paragraph 5, sweetness and devotion. It's also sweetness and devotional prayer, okay? So we're looking at devotional prayer. I just added that. That was context of my own. I added parentheses prayer. Oh, Jesus, I wish there were a way to make this important point crystal clear. I know I can distinguish between the two joys perfectly, but trying to explain it to another person and make myself understood, may God give me this revelation. I reminded the verse we say at the prime, at the end of the final psalm. The final words of the verse are, when you enlarged my heart, Psalm 119.32. For anyone who has had these mystical experiences, you will understand the differences between sweetness and prayer and spiritual consolations. Okay, so she's throwing something here from Psalm... 119 verse 32, when you enlarge my heart, during a mystical experience, God supernaturally comes in and enlarges us somehow in in the interior internally, right? Whether it's our heart, whether it's our supernatural knowledge or supernatural wisdom, um, he comes in and he does something. And that's what she's referring to here. And she's she's saying, I've seen this in Psalm. This makes sense to me. This is what resonates to me what you're doing. When you when you enlarged my heart, um, he came in through mystical prayer and, and enlarged it somehow, some way. Um, and experience through prayer. That is a spiritual consolation. We can't enlarge our own heart. We can't do that. Um, He does it for us. Those of you who have not had these experiences, the subject will require a bit more explanation. The sensible devotion, sweetness in prayer, does not enlarge the heart and can actually be a bit more constraining is our own efforts Although the soul receives the joy in seeing what you what is done for God, but the soul can also shed sorrowful tears which surface from our own passion and emotions. I don't know how much about these passions of the soul otherwise 
I would explain them more clearly about what comes from our sensuality and that of our own human nature. Right? So she's saying this, there's some mystical stuff going on here and you know, it's going to be hard to separate it through unless you start understanding discerning what the, what, what is the supernatural and what isn't. So through ascetical prayer, um, the heart doesn't enlarge. It's just we, we get better at prayer. We understand how to do something. When God starts tugging on us, starts pulling us in and starts shaping us for what he needs us to be, that's when the, our heart gets enlarged by him. He does it. It's, it's, it's mystical prayer. Remember, it's communion with God. Through our communion with God and through him, we get expanded interior-wise, right? In our prayer life, our heart, our soul, our spirit, he's doing stuff. Paragraph 5 continued. Having been through a spiritual prayer state myself, I feel dim-witted and not being able to provide a concise explanation. Knowledge and learning are a great advantage to everyone. So <laughs> she feels dim-witted. I love her. I love her talk. Um, she goes, yeah, I just, I've been through all this, but for the life of me, I can't explain it to you, which is okay, right? It's supernatural. It's God. God's going to do this stuff to us. I can't explain it. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so we're with you. We're with you, Teresa. We're with you. Hang in there. Mansion 4, Chapter 1, Paragraph 6. St. Teresa's experience of it. My own experience of this delight and sweetness in meditation was that when I began to weep over the passion, I could not stop until I had a severe headache. The same thing occurred from one account from my own personal experience of joy and sweetness in prayer meditation. I once wept over the passion and I could not stop until I got a severe headache. I had a similar experience when I grieved over my sins. These experiences were great grace from God. I have no intention of discussing which of these states of prayer is better. Okay, again, I just want to interject too. I did some reformatting of her text to make it sound more um, vernacular English or more contemporary English here. That's why I call this a CE edition, contemporary English. So you see if I'm reading it and you're reading along another one, I've, I've changed some wording just because she didn't make sense or whoever translated it into their PhD vernacular didn't make sense in common street English. So um, I'm trying to keep her complete verbiage. I'm trying to complete her total passion of the, the her Catholicism. I, I said I'm not a Catholic, but I think her this whole thing has to be encapsulated and preserved in its framework to teach it. So um, I just yeah, even down to her 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 senses are you know praying to Mary and stuff. I said I'm not a Marianist, um, but you know I want to preserve her work here to teach this. So um, even though I did my own contemporary English version, I totally preserved her Catholicism because I think that's important. And I'm trying to preserve her as much as possible to convey her work here. So that's my little disclaimer here. Um, I just wanted to preserve who she is and what she's saying. And so her, her message here just you know transcends time. She was really good at um, spiritual direction and equipping others in prayer. And we still need that today as much as we did, wow, 600 years ago. This is still, still relevant. You know that's the Holy Spirit writing this, right? So forget denomination. We don't need, you know, it's okay. Um, we could still work through what she has to say from the Holy Spirit. She's awesome. Paragraph six continued. However, I really wish I knew how to explain the difference between the two. The state of prayer I am focusing on here, our tears and good desires in prayer, originate in our own human nature, but end in God. The sensible devotion, tangible experience in prayer is very desirable, Right. But the soul must have the humility to understand that it is no more holy or virtuous because of the experiences. It is hard to determine whether these experiences are merely acts of love, but either way, the gift is always from God. All right, so if you're having these experiences, it doesn't make you any more virtuous, right? Um, I do Christian counseling and spiritual direction, and then I, I was working with a young man, um, really great person, but he's in a public school system. They've did a pretty good job of distorting his, his um, personal beliefs. But he wants the point now where he just wants to have a supernatural encounter with God just to have proof that God's there. And I told him, well, you know, God doesn't work that way, right? Because um, he knows, he says, I've had a few. I said, dude, that doesn't make me more virtuous than you. It's just that, you know, for some reason, God showed these to me. He'll probably show you different stuff. So don't worry about it, especially at a very young age, you know. Um, I went through a haunting and stuff first at a young age before I got to see anything really good supernatural. I saw the bad supernatural. So, um, yeah, it's just, it just, so when God showed me angels and stuff, it didn't make me more virtuous. It's just, he had to get me on board, right, with some very dark stuff. So, you know, if somebody doesn't have any experiences at all, it doesn't make it any less virtuous than a person that does. We all have the whole, same Holy Spirit in us, right? And you must go by the playbook of the Holy Spirit that is in you. And that's key in mystical theology. 
Um, I think a lot of charismatic churches are going to have a hard time in mystical theology because, like I said, we're back to the, the, the screaming baby in the mall. I want this, I want this, I want this. That's kind of how our, our charismatic churches have worked. Like the, um, was it the Apostolic Reformation, right? Um, I was involved with that a while back and stuff too. And just, there were so many things that were just, it didn't align and your soul goes, this isn't right, you know? And so I kind of abandoned it and re- revoked my, uh, you know, reverend memberships to those things. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. It's it's a very personal relationship with Jesus, and He's going to develop you how He wants to, you know. So don't be begging for stuff other people have. And like I told you in the past, a lot of people don't have what they profess to have. Yep. Um, just if you haven't seen anything supernatural, so what? Just praise Jesus. Just if you have the presence of Him and you're saved by Him, that's all you really need. Just keep talking to Him. He'll, he'll, like I said here, and um, he's waiting for your will to be in a place that's aligned. It's going to be a struggle. It's going to be, when it's a trial, it means it's not going to be very fun. You're going to go through trials for Jesus to get you to the point where your wills can align. And, you know, if it's you're stuck in the third mansions for all your life, too, it's no big deal, right? You love Jesus. Who cares? Right? He knows. He's going to, as long as you work with him, he's going to pull you along. And we're like, you know, human nature with us, too. What was that, what was that movie Up, you know, with the, the, the dog squirrel? That's our human mind. That's that's what Sister Teresa is talking about here. We keep we keep um, hearing squirrel, and our mind gets distracted and wanders elsewhere. We can mind and get distracted elsewhere for, for years and come back to this. So, don't 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 beat yourself up. Things aren't going the way you want. You know, Jesus is still with you. He never left you. Just us. We kind of drift off and do weird things. Paragraph seven: Love of God and how to foster it. These feelings of devotion are most common with souls who are in the first three mansions and are nearly always using their understanding and reason, right, the faculties, in making meditations. Souls in the first three mansions are typically the ones who have these devout feelings. These souls' intellects work nearly nonstop, using their understanding and reason in their discursive scripture readings and their meditations. They usually excel in this because they are unaware of other ways of reaching out to God, all right? In other words, we're just doing what we know to do and how to do it best, right, and stay with it. You ever notice that God really doesn't teach how to pray? He just tells us, um, he gives the Lord's Prayer and for other things. He goes, by the way, I also went off in the middle of the night and talked to my father. Um, he just gives you a few examples there, right? He wants us to work it out with him. Start off with the Lord's Prayer. That's what a lot of Teresa's stuff is. It's, you know, she's reciting the Our Father, Matthew 6, right? Um, there's Pray to Our Father. That's how Jesus instructed us. Use his instructions. You know, there's all these books on wild stuff on prayer. You don't, you don't have to go off on that. I've got strategies. I've got this and that. And I got one strategy. I talked to Jesus. That's that's it. You know, he's gonna protect me. So, like I said, these minds usually excel in this because they're unaware of any other ways of reaching out to God. Just use the basic stuff. Keep it simple, stupid, right? You don't need to go off to a school of supernatural ministry and stuff, right? I keep beating up on that, but it's true. You can be a mystic just by talking to Jesus, right? That's what a mystic is. A person has. Um, to a communication with God, communion with God is a soul that communes with God. That's all it is. And these charismatic said, "They're I'm mystic such and such. You know, I've got this, I've got that. You know, and they put it use a title. It's not a title. It's just <laughs> stop with the titles already. <laughs> Arg. Yeah, oh my goodness. Here we. Okay, I'm, I'm rabbit trailing. I must. I must move on. Thank you. Paragraph seven continued. To move deeper spiritually with God, these souls need to engage in the acts of praising God. Rejoicing in his goodness, that is, he is God, and desire to honor and glorify him. The soul must do this to the best of its abilities. This sparks our will to engage with God, right? This sparks our will to engage with God. Very important right there. We must be sensitive during this time for when God may come to us and give us a special grace. We must not let our intellect push this encounter aside so we can finish our usual meditation. But I have spoken on this subject elsewhere, and I won't repeat myself here. It's in life. Um, chapter 12, paragraphs 2 through 4. Okay, so she's talking about this infused prayer. Let's unpack this one more time. To move deeper, to move deeper spiritually with God, these souls need to engage in acts of praising God, rejoicing in His goodness, that He is God, and desire to honor and glorify Him. The soul must do this to the best of its abilities. This will spark our will to engage with God. All right, important right there. Right, so we we're praising him, we're worshiping him, we're our will is like God, 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 be with us. 
we must be sensitive during this time for when God may come to us, there it is, infuse prayer and give us a special grace. We must not let our intellect push this encounter aside so we can finish our meditation. Right? That is what we are doing in First Mansions 1 through 3, as we are told to, right? Don't let your intellect and your faculties stray. Focus back in. However, when this infused prayer comes in, we got to discern it and let it happen. We must let our intellect push this encounter aside so we can finish our meditation, right? We must not let our intellect push it aside. Um, and yeah, that's the beginning of infused prayer. That's This is the area. Paragraph 7, the lower piece of it, is what she's talking about here. Here it comes. Infused prayer just showed up from Jesus. And that's what we have to let in and not push it aside, right? Paragraph 7 continued. I will, however, say this for quicker progress through your spiritual development and reach to the deeper mansions we desire. Keep this in mind. The important thing is not to think much, but to love much, right? Where will desires Jesus. You know, just sit there. It's like, it's a somewhat absorption. I'm, my will is absorbed. Jesus, I desire you. Come, Jesus. True Jesus, come. Oh, Jesus, and, you know, I, just, I just want the real you. Whatever, not the, the not the, whatever the, the society you is, the made-up you. I want the real you. It's in the Gospels. You, the red text, Jesus, the one that spoke, the one that went to the cross and died for me, who died for my sins and ro- you know, rose again in three days and went to heaven and opened heaven for me. And I can only he- enter heaven through you. That's who I want. My will desires you. That's what she's saying, right? Focus your will into that. Therefore, do whatever excites your passion and love for Jesus. We may not even know what love is, which doesn't surprise me. Okay, it doesn't surprise me either. Sometimes we have broken foundations from our life, from trauma, things that come in. But love is not represented by our sweetness and devotion, but in our wholehearted devotion to chase God's heart and please him. Wow, you see the separation there? One more time. Love is not represented by our sweetness and devotion. Although it's good, we need to do it to get there. We need to be in this, but in our wholehearted devotion to chase God's heart and please him in all things outside of life, outside of prayer life. You know, if you're just going to church on Sunday and that's it, tip, wow, that was a that was a great sermon and the worship really whacked me and that was great. And you wait till next Sunday. Probably not going to enter even the third mansions, right? Um, this heart is chasing God seven by 24, right? And it, it doesn't want to offend him. It wants to be with him. So, uh, so, and so far as humanly possible, avoid things that would offend him, right? As she's saying here, avoid things that will offend him. And that's the, the heart and the soul and the spirit that are on the path to go to deeper mansions. She's saying love much, right? It's not this methodical, oh, you know, I've, I'm, I've done this discursive prayer. I've done this for 20 years and stuff. Therefore, I must be here. I've done all the things right. And I've got prayer down to an art. Remember she talked about that in the, the um, third mansions chapter one, right? And here comes the humility trial. Smack. It's just chase him, you know. God, I may not be having angelic experiences. I may not be having a vision. I may not be having super cool dreams, but I don't care. I love you, man. You've done so much in my life. You provided so much for me. I just can't imagine what I'd be like without you, right? That's it right there. It's in a nutshell. You know, she said, chase the giver and not the gifts, right? That's another one of hers. Not to think much, but to love much, and don't chase the giver, but chase, to chase the giver, but don't chase the gifts. Woo, I almost got in trouble with Jesus that one there. Woo, I'm sorry about that, Jesus. We must petition God for his will with the advancement of the honor of his glory of his son and the increase of the Catholic Church. These are the signs of love. Do not think that you must be focused all the time in God, and if your meditation gets distracted, that all is lost, right? So if you get distracted, it's all right. I mean, I do all the time. It's like, I don't know, I must have ADHD prayer life, and I still get stuff to come through, right? It, it's okay. It's okay to get distracted and pull yourself back in, but if there's a supernatural encounter, you will know the difference, and she'll outline some of the experiences here. You will know it. It's just, it's just amazing. It's just, your, like I said, your will's captivated. We're talking about non-corporeal, the operating system of the brain, right? The faculties, the intellect, the imagination, right? Um, the reasonings. Um, they get suspended by God like, whoa, you know? And again, it's not transcendental meditation. It's not what's happening here. But they kind of get suspended because our will's like, wow, Jesus is here. I can feel him. This is great. Uh, you're here, Jesus. I feel you. And just acknowledge him being there, right? Oh, this is incredible. And he's not saying stuff. He's not doing like the loose thing. Honey, I'm home. He may not be saying that. Um, it just his presence comes in and you're drawn into that deeper mansion with him. You know, like I said, temp- we have temporary experiences. and This could be one of them. Paragraph eight, distractions. I myself have struggled with these conflicts of thoughts. About four years ago, I arrived at the conclusion that another faculty of the soul, that the imagination and not just the understanding of the intellect, 
was involved in these spiritual experiences. I asked a learned man, and he affirmed my revelation. His confirmation gave me no peace. The notion that the understanding is one of the strong faculties of soul, I was confused as to why it was so sluggish in comparison, while the imagination could take flight so quickly that only God could restrain them, right? So it looks like God's going to restrain the imagination. He'll suspend it for us. And that's the beginning of his infused prayer. And she's like, wow, how can this happen? You know, even we can't har- harness the imagination, right? Things come in. That's kind of like um, our HD TV set to heaven, right, is our imagination. We use it for other things. We use it for creativity. We use it for, you know, creating stuff, drawing pictures, dreaming, doing stuff. And it's just, it's so tapped in the spiritual realm. It's incredible. Imagination is a spiritual component of this operating system, right? So cool. Yep. Only God, was it? Only God can uh, restrain them. Amazing. God just amazing. We are his creatures. That's why he can do this to us. He, we're his creatures. He created us in his image, right? In his image. Paragraph 8 continued. When God does this, he unites himself to us, and at this moment, it may seem like we're detached from our bodies. This distraction puzzled me. The only way to explain this is that the faculties of my soul, the understanding, the intellect, were occupied and recollected by God within my mind. Okay, this is infused or supernatural recollection. It's what's going to call it infused prayer right now because I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Because there's different stages as she's going to explain this. It's like the first step, right? Infused prayer as mystical prayer steps in. She's breaking this down for us. There's several steps to this. This first one is an infused prayer, right? Um, she may call it infused recollection, but I don't want to jump ahead here. So it's infused prayer. He suspended our thoughts and our will is drawn in, right? Our will is in union with his right now. The imagination was wandering and it's distracted, right? Like, let it. <laughs> she said, just let it. Let it run off. It's like, it's like a, you open your door, we got a puppy, it runs out, right? It's like the puppy. It comes back when you call it, but you know, just say, like, yeah, let it out. Um, just the more important part is union of the will with God and embrace that. Love much. Don't think much. Don't, don't, don't be hurting cats right now. Love much. Embrace the will of God while you're with him in the deeper mansion. Paragraph nine. They do not destroy divine union, right? Okay. So, oh Lord, please consider how much we suffer from our own ignorance. We mistakenly believe we only need to keep our thoughts and meditation fixed on you. We don't even consider seeking counsel from those who are instructed in these matters. We think we're at the peak of our spiritual growth and that we have learned all there is to know. As a result of our ignorance and lack of humility, we find ourselves enduring harsh trials. The confusion of trials during these times... The ones that are good, we interpret as being bad and to be far more severe faults of our own than they actually are, right? There's this weird juxtaposition here, right? The confusion of trials during these times. Um, they're supposed to be good trials for us. They're, they're good, but we interpret them as being bad, right? We're in a bad trial right now and it's my own fault because I did this or I did some sort of sin or something. Now it's not sin's fault. It's nothing else. God's weeding some stuff out that we need to go into deeper mansions. He's, he's doing the, the gardener's doing the weeding right now. That's what he's talking about, right? Here she comes, right? She's telling us that way. If we're, we're using her metaphor of us being the garden, um, God sees some weeds we don't see, and they may have deep roots. He's going to yank them suckers. They're going to hurt, <laughs> right? Oh, my gosh, this is worse than I thought. But, you know, it's not our own fault. He's doing it to get rid of it for us. Like, you got to get this junk. It could be, could be um, I don't know. What's that stuff? It could be generational stuff, right? He's yanking it out. We don't see it because we, we live in it. Our behaviors are generational. We don't see it. So he's going to yank them out for us. And just, just hold on, right? And pluck that eyebrow, Ooh, right? That hurts. <laughs> Paragraph nine continued. This lack of knowledge afflicts many people in the stage of prayer, and especially with the unlearned. I guess we're the unlearned. <laughs> oh, she has her way with words, right? I like how she did like boomerang stuff. These souls complain about their interior trials, become depressed, may lose their health, and even give up on prayer altogether. Just as we can't stop the rotation of the heavens as they rush with velocity on their course, neither can we stop the power of our active imagination, right? They're forces of nature, she's saying, right? We can't stop either. And they have their own velocities and motions. When the emotion wanders, all the faculties of the soul go with it. When this happens, we feel we are lost in meditation and all our effort in pulling his presence was wasted. Right? She says, don't worry about this. You know, something can get derailed during the supernatural time. Because the soul really doesn't know what to do with this stuff. The soul's having this this God jump in, right? He's opened up the doors from the deeper mansions. Hey, I'm home. Here we go. You know, he embraces us, pulls us in. The, the faculty's like, what? I was just processing a bread recipe I saw on you know, YouTube. What is going on here? Right? So he can just come in where he wants. 
or you know, it, it, it's <laughs> she's she has explained the best of her abilities, right? She's saying, don't you can't have a plan for this. There's no methodology. God's going to do what He wants when He wants. It's His grace and give what He wants. So, like I said, He's going to give to you what He wants. He's amazing and He's loving. Love much. That's what she's saying here. Paragraph nine continued. Well, it's a big one. When this does happen, keep in mind what may be occurring here is that the soul is being with him in one of the deeper mansions. While our imagination remains in the outskirts of the castle, at warfare with a thousand wild and venomous creatures gaining merit through its battles, therefore do not let this warfare upset you and do not give up on prayer, which is what the devil is trying to do here. He's letting us get sifted. Do you see that? There it is, trials, you know. These people walk around going, bliss, bliss, bliss. You're seeing that? The charismatics always crack me up. <laughs> like, if you're always in bliss, how can you possibly be going through a trial, right? They always have these funky smiles on their face. I'm bliss, bliss to you, bliss, bliss. Yeah, it's a great saying and stuff, but <laughs> right in the middle of this this soul, she's talking about her soul, and having the, the deeper mansion doors open up, she's embracing God and his deep, dark spiritual warfare, the, the bad demons or whatever's going on in the outskirts of the, the mansion are raving havoc right now, right? What on earth is going on? Um, therefore, do not let this warfare upset you and do not give up on prayer, which is what the devil's trying to do here. So he's trying to rage warfare when he's, 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 throwing, a, he's throwing a tizzy fit, right? But God's going to let it happen. God, God goes, you know, your will's hanging here with me. Let's just sit back and watch this and just let him do what he wants to do. He can't, he can't touch you here. So it's interesting, right? So the message she's giving is the deeper you go with Jesus right now is you may encounter some deep warfare when he comes to embrace you early on in the fourth man's mansions chapter one infused prayer so if that happens it happens um it only makes sense right if you're going the right direction you're gonna experience warfare that's always tell people right and it's even spiritual warfare you know if you're getting intense warfare you're going the right direction just make sure it's not a self-inflicted wound but here <laughs> the devil's gonna throw a tizzy fit in the outer mansions and try to pull you back and have you give up in prayer don't do that Wow, it's amazing. So consider the intensity of this, this warfare. She's telling you not to be, get upset and give up on prayer. There's, it's going to be an intense battle. So the mind's going to be going, what is going on? I'm embracing the will of Jesus right now. We're together. We're in union. But outside, this stuff's going nuts. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, here we go. Fourth mansions. Paragraph 10. St. Teresa's Physical Distractions. As I write this, I am thinking the loud noise in my head, which I mentioned in the introduction. This internal noise makes it nearly impossible to obey the command given to me by my superiors to write this. It sounds as if there were several rushing waterfalls in my head, while in the other parts of my head drowned out sounds of the rushing water. There are voices of birds singing and whistling. The tumult is not in my ears, but in the upper part of my head, where they say is located the superior part of the soul. She's got some warfare going on here, man. It's like, look at the noises. Man, I'm getting, I'm getting artillery fire, right? And so, <laughs> there's a tumult of noise. It sounds like a waterfall rushing. They got, you know, and then and it's drowning out sounds of rushing water. There are voices of birds singing and whistling. It's like, there's all sorts of, stuff. they're just, they're just bombing her. It's like, what is this, like, propaganda warfare, you know, the war, the, the army does with the loudspeakers. Yeah, they're bombing her right now. So, it sounds like warfare is going to happen, even when you're in a deep embrace with God. Ex yeah, totally expect warfare to happen. I think she's telling us here. She's giving us a heads up. Paragraph 10 continued. Personally, I've always believed that this to be true because the powerful flights of the Spirit seem to take place from this area in my head. God, please remind me to discuss this further when I write about it in deeper mansions. The explanation doesn't belong here. It's very likely that God sent me, to this, headache, sent me this headache to help me write on this subject. All this noise in my brain doesn't interfere with my prayer. See, she knows how to fight back. Nor am I writing this for you. Understand that my soul is calm, Filled with love and desires, my mind is clear. So the enemy is bombing where there's banging, there's clanging, there's rushing water, the birds singing, and everything that's all juxtaposed and just noise, noise, noise. Sounds like the Grinch, right? The noise, noise, noise. She says, but I'm terribly filled with love and I'm and my my mind is clear. So she's in this, she knows how to handle her warfare. It's like whatever, just you know, I'm not even listening to that garbage right now. This is the point most people come to. Mike, Mike, you know, we need a deliverance minister, cast this stuff out. Well, you know, here she is right here. She knows how to deal with it. We're, we're in the, um, the big boy, big girl school of prayer right now. We must deal with it on our own. That's where we're at. We're going deeper in the mansions. We must know how to deal with both the good and the bad. And 
which he's saying here is God enlarged our heart. He's also going to enlarge our armor and our stages of warfare. Why? Because in the deeper, darker stuff, we must be able to stand. We're no longer on uh, the baby's milk here, right? We're drinking, we're eating the prime rib. We're eating the good stuff, right? And the stuff that costs like $50 an ounce. And that, that, that comes at a price, right? You get it in a good restaurant, it comes at a price. You get the good wine here too. That's the analogy he's putting off here. Paragraph 11. How to treat distractions. How then can the superior part of the soul remain undisturbed if it resides in the upper part of the brain? I can't account for this, but I am certain this is the case. These painful noises are felt when there is no ecstasy or suspension of the faculties accompanied with the prayer. When the experience is ecstatic, suspension, I do not feel any pain. I persevere through these obstacles and warfare and prayer. Our own reasoning tells us we should be concerned, but there is no reason to worry. If these thoughts are oppression from the devil, he will leave us alone if we ignore him, right? <laughs> She's like, well, if you want to be here and we're hanging out with Jesus, you know, hold on tight because here we go. I love, I love her attitude. This, I mean, this is, she knew how to do her warfare. She, she was on. Man, I got to sit and have a chat with her in heaven. Buy our latte or something. I don't know. What, what do we get to do in heaven? I'll do something. <laughs> Let's have a conversation. Um, terms used here. I'm preserving some of the, um, the text that came from the, 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 the manuscript I'm using. The term was ecstasy and ecstatic. That's an old mystical theology prayer for suspension of the faculties, right? Um, so that's when the, the imagination, the reasoning, and understanding are suspended. And the will is embraced by the will of God, the union of wills, right? That's an ecstasy or ecstatic. <laughs> I got a funny story. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Here it comes. Another charismatic story. Here it comes. Brace yourself for impact. Um, a while back, my wife and I were going to get training in um, inner healing. And there are some people there that took the uh, <laughs> the new mystics course on ecstasy and ecstatic. And so we were having just an exercise. It was good to connect with God, like basic recollection. And all of a sudden, in the middle of us, midst of us from behind us, there's one individual. She starts having orgasms, right? Because that's her form of ecstasy. Um, these were loud, like grunting out, oh my God, what is going on back there, right? I don't even want to turn around and look. And, you know, and just, it's the charismatics have run away with the wrong theology. It's not even theology, it's garbage from the new mystics. That is ecstasy, right? It's sexual ecstasy. No, it's not. Ecstasy is just the, the peace and the suspension of the brain when God comes in and just embraces us through infused prayer and infused contemplation. It's not an orgasmic experience. <laughs> oh, my word. It's hysterical. Um, I, I now, In my area, I mentioned that quite a bit. But, oh, I know that person. Yeah. But it's just, <laughs> oh, you know, be careful of the tree you eat from, right? Because you get the wrong information. It's just, it's funny. So here we go. So, yeah, just um, if you're, you're in an ecstasy or suspension of the, the faculties, don't worry. You know, there's going to be warfare, she said. Just ignore them. You know, it's ignore him and embrace yourself and, and, and draw yourself and desire the one who's in a deeper mansion, his majesty, Jesus, right? Just be with him while you're with him. Let the, let the bad guy have his uh, temper tantrum. Who cares? You know, it's funny. Paragraph 11, it continued. And if these thoughts come, as they often do, one of the frailties we've inherited from Adam's original sin, let us be patient and endure them for the love of God. It's a natural burden we must endure, just as eating and sleeping are natural burdens for us. Let us acknowledge that we are human and fallen in nature. The words spoken by the bride in the canticles, the Song of Songs 8, 1 through 4, come to my mind. There is no better place for these words, for I believe no earthly scorn or suffering can try us so severely as a warfare we experience within our souls, as all this uneasiness and conflict can be endured as long as we have peace within ourselves. Okay. So what she's saying here, during our sanctification process, don't forget who we're from. We are from the flesh of the first Adam. Um, we have natural burdens. We have a fallen state. Our flesh is fallen, right? Um, our, our spirits are saved when we're saved through Jesus Christ, right? Um, so the flesh, right? That's what we go through, the stuff we go through. Why do we, why do we have to deal with these addictions? Why do we have to deal with sexual fantasies? Why do we have to deal with sexual perversion? Why do we have to deal with um, drugs? Why do we have to deal with alcohol? Why do we have to deal with um, greed? Why do we, because they're all natural burdens from our fallen nature from the garden with Adam and Eve. 
they're stuck in our flesh, right? We have to fight the flesh. That's why we fast, right? To afflict the flesh and get ourselves more spiritual with Jesus, deny ourselves of worldly stuff, right? So she says, you're going to come under warfare because when you go to Jesus, it's like the bride in the Song of Songs, um, was it chapter 8, verse 1 through 4? I read through that. I didn't pick up on the association or make a revelation of what she's saying here, but apparently it did for her. Um, but we're going to experience warfare as we go to the, the bridegroom. That's the one last thing the enemy wants to do is to go to the bridegroom. He does not want us to be one of the virgins with our oil and our lamps, right? So he's going to try to kick our lamps out of our hands. That's what she's talking about here. All this uneasiness and conflict may be endured as long as we have peace within ourselves. What's peace? It's a virtue. What's peace? It's a fruit of the Spirit. Okay, we're talking about the Holy Spirit here, right? She knows what she's talking about, man. She's like PhD level. She didn't have a degree. She taught herself all this stuff, but everything goes back biblically, lines up with her. You know, her stuff may sound weird, but look for look for her tie-ins like she's doing here. Well, we have um, Psalms tie-in of enlarging our heart. We've had Song of Songs. She always ties it back into scripture. She, this, this woman knew her scripture inwards and out, um, and she knew it in Latin. <laughs> she was Spanish. She knew it in Latin. She's amazing. So that's why she is our spiritual director, and her work has transcended time. She's amazing. She knew her stuff. Paragraph 11 continued. But if our desire is rest amidst a thousand different trials of the world, knowing that God has prepared this rest for us, and the only obstacle stopping us from reaching this is our own selves, this trial proved to be painful and most insufferable. Wow. So she's saying just, yeah, it's going to be a deep trial, guys. It's, Hang in there. Paragraph 12. They should be disregarded. Lord, bring us to a place where these miseries can longer taunt our soul and despise us. Even this life, God delivers us from these miseries when we reach the last mansions through God's grace. These miseries will not afflict or oppress everyone as they did for me for so many years. That experience was due to my own wretchedness, so it seems. I strove to take vengeance on myself. I did suffer a great deal through this experience, and perhaps it may be f for you too. Paragraph 12 continued. For this reason, I'll try to explain the subject matter to you in different ways, hoping to find some means of making this clear. I want to make it clear that this experience is unavoidable. Don't let this understanding disturb or drive you. Just let the mill clack on while we grind our wheat. That is, let us continue to work with our will and our intellect. <laughs> like that. Uh, just let the wheel clack on, right? It's crunch, 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 crunch. Um, just grinding your wheat here. So, yeah, it's just don't worry about this. This is going to be unavoidable. You'll know it when you experience it. It's just a very quiet overtaking. Just a, just consider that your will is overtaken by the love for Jesus. It's something you can't force on. It's something that triggers. It comes in. And he lets you know it because he's going, I'm just going to shut down everything. And all you can do is just have your will, love my will, and embrace it, right? And you're embracing the presence of God. It's what the will is doing. And that's how you know what's going to happen. And like I said, there's no way to explain it because it's non-corporeal. There's no feeling to it. Um, it's just, it is what it is. So it's the way of God letting us know, this is me. Um, I'm the invisible God, but I'm very real. Can you explain this thing away? No, you cannot. Paragraph 13, self-knowledge necessary. The spectrum of these troubles can vary according to your state of health or your personal circumstances. The soul will suffer, although it's not its fault. It is sin through the other faults. For this reason, it is important for us to practice patience. Our counsel and readings on meditative prayer have instructed us not to entertain wandering thoughts. Remember, this is the first through third mansions. I won't be wasting time in instructing our counseling on these trials. This approach does work until the point of His grace where He chooses to give us His light. What is His light? It's infused prayer. And additional measures in your prayer are required, right? We've changed a boundary condition of prayer where we have to now adapt to um, allowing things to enter into our mind and thoughts to come in because they're Jesus is coming to us, right? He, the deeper mansions have opened up and he's letting us come in for a time being. It's, it's, it's temporal. It's a very small period of time. Uh, it's called absorption. We're in his presence, right? Um, and that's what she's talking about here. So we have to, she calls it giving us his light. Additional measures must be taken in your prayer. We can only pray exactly as we did in the first through third mansions. Paragraph 13 continued. His majesty wishes us to learn by the ordinary ascetical means to understand ourselves, right? That's what he wants us to go persevere. Like it's been two months to 10 years or 50 years in the third mansions, right? 
We must recognize that our soul is not at fault, that it's wandering imagination. It's our fallen human nature that it, it wanders, right? And for the temptations from the devil, right? It's just, it's from our fallen human nature. So we must understand this, um, be at peace with this, and just let God clean us up when it happens, right? So don't beat yourself up for this, right? Because that's just the way the, the enemy's going to use temptation. See, you're not as good as you thought you were. Oh, you're this old big third mansions prayer person, right? <laughs> He's going to try to beat you up, thinking you're all good. Well, you know what? You're not even a first mansions one. Look at the sin in your life. Look at the temptations you still have. Oh, go back to the first mansion. Just give up prayer, right? That's what he's doing. He can't stand you entering into the, the deeper chambers of Jesus. He can't stand it. And just he's just burning with anger. So again, our fallen nature pulls us back to this, and that's what the devil's counting on. Just ignore it. Say, you know what? I'm a fallen nature flesh in exile, but I'm a spiritual being, and I'm out of here. <laughs> and I won't be anywhere near you when I'm done with this exile. And so that we have to develop the attitudes, the inner interior life of a spiritual being. And that's what she's saying here, right? Just ignore it. We're, you're never going to fully get rid of your fallen human nature because we're human. Only one guy did that, and that was Jesus Christ, and the rest of us can't do it. All we could do is learn by his example and learn to be more like him and just go through the trials he gives us and become more like him. So we made it through Fourth Mansions Chapter 1. Interesting stuff, some heavy stuff here. So we have infused prayer, and basically it's our will being drawn into the presence of God in the deeper mansions, right? That's it right there. That's just this new prayer that comes in. Um, it's different from the first or third mansions where we're focusing on meditations. We don't want to get distracted. We're going to you know, harness and um, bridle our imagination from running off all these different places. Um, now it doesn't matter because this new prayer comes in, and we'll understand how we get it where our will is just captivated in the presence of Jesus Christ. In a, in a deeper mansions, right? And the rest of the faculties don't don't know what's going on. They'll be suspended or the imagination will be running off wild again. It says, you know, <laughs> it's going to be like herding cats, whatever's happening. Um, but you're going to be absorption. You'll be in the state of absorption. That's a new term right now. Where the will is captivated by the presence of God. Now, we can't stay in absorption for long, right? Like I said, we have the, these charismatic people who have been trained wrong and their souls think they're in a state of absorption. They're walking around with these big smiles in their faces. Well, on the inside, their lives are falling apart, right? Because they're not letting God do it. they got to put on the display, I'm bliss. Everything's bliss. Everything's good inside. But that's not the case. We want to be raw. We want to be real. <laughs> it's like it's it's going to look messy. But that's the way God works with us, right? When it's more messy, the better. Um, just let him do what he's got to do. And don't worry about if you're in the fourth mansions or not. It's not a great book. You know, we're starting a prayer meeting. Hey, you know. Hey, tell us about your prayer life, you know. Well, by the way, I'm a fourth bench in chapter two individual sitting right here, and I can tell you how I pray. You know, that, that doesn't fly. It's very personal. Nobody really cares. And what's interesting, too, as I go through this material, um, I've been to the deeper mansions, but I can't tell what mansion I'm in now as I read the first to the fourth. It's like, I've had this going on. I keep having this. So it's, and, and then to reread, the St. Teresa saying, I get thrown back left and right to different mansions. You do. He's going to clean us up, man. He's going to get that humility and spank it out of us, right? <laughs> out of the pride. He's going to get the pride and spank it out of us. Humility is everything. So if you cross some thresholds, I, yeah, I've had uh, some good fourth and fifth experience man, mansion experiences. But man, I keep getting thrown back to the third mansion. That's probably what's going on, right? She's saying you're not going to really know where you're at. It's not linear. Um, he's going to let you have the experiences to move forward. You can have more and more of them, and all of a sudden, poof, you're punted back to the third mansion or something with aridity or something crazy. Like, well, Mike, we found some more pride in you. Ah, it is what it is. Like, all right, God, just get it out of me. Get it out. You know, and he's cringe like, that means a trial, doesn't it? It's going to stink. Um, but that's how God does stuff with us. It's not deliverance. We're not, you know, he, 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 she said here too, um, and you're in the middle of a deep absorption with God and the demons are just rattling through your brain and causing chaos, right? She said, that's going to happen too. So be aware of it. And I'm the deliverance minister. I'm a fourth mansions person and I keep having demonic activity. You know, you know if you had demonic activity, it's a different story. Um, but if they're oppressing you and rattling noises through your head and yelling at you like, you're no good, you're this and that, like she's probably saying. And she said, it was like a thunderous waterfall, these things going on here and some are whistling, being distractive. <laughs> you know? It's 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 not doesn't sound like bliss, does it? Bliss, bliss, bliss. It sounds like you know. She says it's there's a what he's providing here. It looks like the the fruits coming here are patience and peace. Um, this is where patience and peace get get um, forged. 
Um, those are the fruits of the spirit, right? Since these patience and peace is coming out right here, and that's what she's saying. Um, so it usually comes through trial, right? We're passed through the forge. It's trial by fire, right? And it just, it just burns the bad stuff out of us. So anyhow, this is interesting. It, like I said, she's going to walk us through step by step. This is the initial beginning stages of mystical prayer is infused prayer. Um, she hasn't really identified or called it by anything. But just like, it's this thing that happens, this new kind of prayer happens. And then I think Father Thomas Dubé or someone else labeled it infused prayer, infused contemplation. Um, I hope this information helps. Uh, remember, ecstasy has nothing to do with having spiritual orgasms. <laughs> I had to throw that one back in there because if I hear you guys and you heard this and you're doing that, uh uh-uh, uh, you didn't hear it from me. It's like, I did not teach you that. Um, ecstasy is infused prayer and it's in a state of absorption. Or just total peace and love and will is in captivated in the presence of God. That is ecstasy. Okay? Um, until next time, guys, uh, we're getting deeper into stuff. I can't believe we covered 30%. The 70% remaining is all mystical, right? So we still have a ways to trudge through. Um, but this was good stuff right here. Love this stuff. She has some amazing stuff. She has amazing advice. She's a great spiritual director. Um, I'm going to post up the other information at the field guide spiritual warfare.blogspot.com that hosts this under the mansions for chapter one i'll put the show notes up there i'll put um other stuff there's other good material the thomas the fire within father thomas dubay's book great stuff um i'll probably put up some of the discerning hearts talk on this too because that's also a good complimentary information that comes in from um, dr lyles um, from that show and krista mcgregor they have a lot of good stuff on this too um to read and just you know wrap your arms around it it's about deeper prayer life it's very personal it's not a grading system and like i said if you start understanding it, it can't be a grading system because you're gonna get thrown around so much where okay i made it this far and god's going back to the end of the line dude we gotta clean this out you're like oh my gosh really i just got this far so it has nothing to do with pride it just it's 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 a, more of a book on the stages of interior prayer whether the stops along the way how he cleaned you up and your long sanctification process, you're going to be bounced around a few different places in the mansions, right? So anyway, um, if you like this podcast, show it some love, tag it, you know, put some likes on it, whatever you can. We're also on, this, the video portion is going to be on YouTube.com, and you can find it there. Um, also, so yeah, just uh, like it, love it, whatever you want to do, and you know, just uh, show us your, your support there. I'm going to continue producing these. I'm also considering producing some more stuff here uh, since these take so long. I'm going to just go ahead for um, biblical and gospel um, Bible study stuff too. I'm not sure. And unpack some of the gospels and do that just so there's more content in between. Um, If there's stuff you guys want to hear about spiritual warfare, um, shoot me a question. I'll probably base a whole show on it because there's so much here. I don't know what you guys want to know. What's too beginner or what's interesting or maybe I should just start talking about some of the stuff I already wrote or go through some of the books. I can do that too. Let me know what you want to hear. Um, but meanwhile, this is a staple because I'm I'm doing it because I love it. I love her work, and I help love doing the research on it. So this is going to be a staple. So I think probably adding Bible study or some other stuff too might be beneficial too. Yeah, I love you guys. You guys are awesome. Continue digging into the, your biblical work and continue uh, reading the Bible and your scriptures, and get that prayer time in and just you know work through those trials. That's where we're at. God bless you guys. I'm uh, Michael Norton, I'm Reverend of M16 Ministries. God bless everyone. Have a good one. Bye.